Hey guys, Uma here and welcome to the third video in our Spotify to Apple Music project. In this video, we'll be creating our client application which will be in React. We will also incorporate Redux into our application for state management. Let's go ahead and get started. In the last video, we set up our authentication server that our client, the React app, will use to authenticate for both Spotify and Apple Music. If this is your first time here, I will attach a link to that video in the card above and in the description below. Feel free to check them out. All the code for this part and the whole project is down in the description in my GitHub page if you want to follow along. As I stated earlier, in this video we'll be creating our React application and we'll be incorporating Redux for state management. Before we get started, let's talk about Redux and React for a little bit. React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It lets you compose complex user interfaces from small and isolated pieces of code called components. You see, web development and websites in general consist of three basic languages, HTML, CSS, and in some cases, JavaScript. Putting this all together, you can make a good looking website. Things start to get a little bit complicated when you want to add some advanced functionalities to your website. Things like connecting to a database, having users sign into your website, sharing data between the pages of your website, and reusing code components throughout your website becomes more of a hassle and will require you to write your own script to do all those things, or you can simply import scripts that other people have written to do all these things. This is where React comes in. React is a JavaScript framework that makes everything I just mentioned and more really easy to do when you're building a website or a web application. If I am building a website and I want the users of my website to be able to sign into the website so I can store their preferences after they have signed in, in React, I can simply use NPM, which stands for Node Package Manager, to install a package that can do everything I just mentioned for me. I can then import the package to my page and call the methods from there. Similarly, I will want to share the user's information between all the pages of my application. React has an inbuilt way I can do this, but there's an even better package called React Redux that does all of this for me. Redux helps you manage the state of your website or web application and allows access and updates of the website's data from any page. It has three main parts, store, actions, and reducers. As you may have already guessed, the store holds the state of the whole application. It contains a few more things other than the application state. We can subscribe and listen to events so that when the store updates, we can update our UI accordingly. Always remember, we can only create one store per application. The store is an object so you can nest and store data as much as you need. Actions are plain JavaScript objects that describe what happens, but they don't describe how the application state changes. We simply send an action to our store whenever we want the application state to change, and the reducers will do the rest. An action typically contains two main fields. The action type, which describes the type of action we'll be dispatching, and the data field that holds the data that we'll use to update the store. Reducers are pure functions that describe how the app state changes. They are used to recalculate the new application state. When we dispatch actions to the store, they get passed to the reducers. The reducer takes in two arguments, the previous app state and the current action that's being dispatched. It then uses the action type to create a new state for the application. I will attach a link in the description below the like button that goes further into Redux explanation. Let's get started with creating the React application. If you're following along, be sure you have Node.js and NPM installed on in your computer. Navigate to the same folder where we created our auth server. Run npm install create react app-g. This will install a package that will help us create the React app. Next, run npx create react app, then your app name. In our case, it'll be Spotify to Apple Music Client. This will create all the necessary files and folders that are needed for a React application. Run npm install all the packages that are listed on the screen right now. Our app has three main pages, the home page, 
the page that shows you the playlist that you can select and the final page that shows you the songs in the playlist that could not be added. Let's create those pages. We'll start with the home page. As you can see, we're done with the home page. I added some CSS to make things look prettier. All the code for that is on my GitHub page. I also linked the transfer to Apple Music button to our authorization. So when we click it, we are redirected to log into Spotify so we can authenticate to get the Spotify playlist. Let's go ahead and create our playlist page, the page that shows us the playlist that we fetch from Spotify. We are done with the playlist page. I'm currently using fake data to test things because we haven't written the code that actually fetches all our playlists. We usually use fake data to test how things will look before our actual data comes in. A quick point I wanted to show about React. If you look in our components folder, we have the playlist card here. This is the code for one of these playlist cards here. Now what we're doing in our playlist pages for each of our fake data here, we simply call the playlist card components, passing in the data, and we loop through that to create multiple playlist cards. This is something that would have been moderately hard to do if we were writing it in plain JavaScript. Let's create the results page. We're done with the results page. As you can see, I used fake data here again to kind of test how things will look. 
that's it for the pages. I will go ahead and create the Redux components off camera, but I'll give a brief overview of what they will be. We will have two action files, one for Spotify, the other for Apple Music. As I stated earlier, the action file is a plain JSON object that we send that describes what changed in our application. We'll also have two reducers, one for Spotify and one for Apple Music. They will be the ones that work the logic to decide how the state of the application would change. We'll then combine two of them into one reducer. We will then have one store that keeps track of the entire state of our application. The code for all of this is down in the description below the like button. That's it for this one guys. In the next episode, we will be working on the logic that fetches the playlist from Spotify, then transfers it to Apple Music. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh,